we're coming to a close on our high school timeline. So far we've basked in the glory of the graduation, we've reminisced on the hells of surviving high school life, and now we have to deal with the frustration of passing the final exams. So I wanted to take a quick look at the final exam, the 1981 slasher. It's a really great film. It's different in the sense that it's very slow paced. They take time to build up to the story. There's a lot of character development. So you do have a chance to get to know the characters before losing them. It's really a very slow build. Within the first hour, there are three murders. And the film opens up with a couple, they're at a makeout point, and the girl keeps complaining that she hears weird noises. The guy never hears anything. It isn't long before some psycho rips the canvas top on the convertible, pulls him out of the car, single-handedly slams him on the hood, and stabs him repeatedly. Meanwhile, the car is rolling, and the girl's just screaming her head off. I think that's a really great opening scene. It's very strong. It sets the mood, but it's also crazy in the sense that you'd have to wonder to yourself, well, how strong is this guy if he can do this? And why is that dumb girl screaming in the back seat when she can just open the door and fling herself out? <laughs> so, yeah, it's a slasher, so, you know, you can't really put too much thought into it, although I do anyway sometimes. The next scene is, um, I forget what the class was, but they were taking their final exam, and a fraternity basically sets up some sort of a prank. They fake a mass murder to distract the class. Meanwhile, that's going on. He goes off and steals the answer key. That way he can pass his test. And this pretty much sets up a whole cry wolf scenario because it's the last week of school. Everyone's calling in pranks and basically wasting the police department's time. So when everything really does start to happen, they're not going to pay any mind. The main heroine, Courtney, stays behind to finish off her exams. She is played by Cecile Baghdadi. I believe this is her only film. And to my understanding, the director, Jimmy Houston, used a lot of his personal friends. He also used uh, a lot of his students in the film. So it's a close-knit group. They're working with people they know or people they're already familiar with. So it's understandable if some of these people just don't ring a bell. It could just be a one-time deal and they just never made a movie again, but that definitely did help cut down on cost. What did help um, Cecile Baghdadi get the role, it has been rumored that during her audition she gave such a realistic scream that she was cast on the spot. Not only that, but they used her scream to dub over some of the other female actresses. There does take a while before all of this murderous rampage does take place. And it isn't long before Courtney is being pursued. She's pretty much the last surviving person on campus. One of the interesting scenes to me is towards the end where after the uh, assassin or the killer has broken out of a, a freezer, she stabs him repeatedly. She stabs him 11 times and it amazes me because the only thing that got dirty were her hands, whereas you would think with so much stabbing motion that she would have at least gotten her face dirty, she would have gotten her shirt dirty, but it's just the hands that were, were dirty. And I don't know if maybe that was done by symbolism, sort of the, the whole Snow White, you know, very pure female character to where she's so innocent that only her hands were blood stained since that was the only part of her that touched the murderer. Uh, maybe I'm just reading into that too much, but that's just my take on that. One of the things that has puzzled me about the film is the fact that you get to see the murderer's face, but you never learn anything about him, how he's tied to the college, what is his motivation for trying to kill people. So it's just this big mystery. He's just this psycho guy that's just maybe just lost a few too many screws and he's just going on a killing rampage. Uh, there really is no backstory about him. You really don't know anything other than he's just killing people just for just for the pleasure of it. The film was shot in six weeks. It was run on a very modest budget. It's actually really good for an older 80s slasher. It keeps pace very well. It doesn't really have too much of the cheesy or hammy acting and a lot of the actors that were hired for this film were actually uh, university graduates. Uh, obviously had studied drama 
so they pretty much knew what they were doing but that is pretty much all i have today i will talk to you guys later